Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Terramina, co-host of Between Terraminas, and also the Lake Orion football and basketball preview shows on ONTV. I want to talk to you guys about um, World War II. One of the big questions I get asked is, why didn't the Soviet Union and Japan fight each other until late 1945? This is significant because this impacted World War II in so many ways. So when we think about World War II, you think about Japan was on the side of Germany and Italy, the Axis powers, whereas the Soviet Union was on the side of the United States, Great Britain, and China. But they never fought each other in the war. They, why did this happen? Why was this significant? Because what it did was Japan ended up fighting against the United States, Britain, and China, whereas the USSR, the Soviet Union, fought against Germany, Italy, and the Axis powers. It allowed both sides to focus on their certain front. Now, it's interesting to, to look at because the Soviet Union and Japan had just fought each, fought each other in the Soviet-Japanese War from 1932 to 1939. Now, it was ultimately seen as a stalemate, but at the same time, a lot of people could, could argue that the Soviet Union clearly won the war. This was mostly fought in northeast China after Japan occupied Manchuria. There had been a lot of border incursions between the Soviet Union and Japan that whether the Japanese would cross into Soviet territory or the Soviets would cross into Japanese territory. There was a lot of border incursions. There was a lot of fighting, particularly in the border area in northeast China. Now, the Soviet Union and Japan did have allies during the war. Um, the Mon Soviet Mongolia, who was at that time under Soviet control, would ally with the Soviet Union, while Manchukuo, which was Japanese-occupied Manchuria, would ally with Japan. Now, in this war, which was fought for seven years, approximately 32,000 Soviets died, while 5,000 Mongolians would also die. Whereas with the Japanese, 20,000 Japanese would die, along with 3,000 Manchurians. Now it's important to know that it's important to know that the Soviets had manpower, had more manpower than Japan. This was not the first time that the Soviet Union and Japan had been fighting each other. It's the Soviet's predecessor, Tsarist Russia in Japan went to war in 1904 and 1905, in which Japan scored a decisive victory over Russia. At that time, Japan was more militarily prepared, more militarily equipped. It shocked the world stage because Ru there was a perception that Russia, with its manpower, was going to go in and take care of business against Japan. But Japan was already militarily tested. Japan had just defeated China in the 1895 Sino-Japanese War. So it was a bit of a, it put Japan very much on a bigger world stage. So by when World War I came around, Japan was mostly fighting against German, colon, German colonial colonies in Asia. So Japan, for the most part, became a bigger, stronger power as a result of World War I. Now, there was, two, there was two battles that was significant, which was the Battle of Lake Kassan, and the, which was from July to August of 1938, and the Battle of Kaklingol. Both of these were decisive Soviet victories. And as a result, <coughs> a ceasefire was reached. So, in the, especially after the Battle of Kaklingol, which was from May to September 1939, right before World War II. Now, it's important to view that Japan had reestablished relations with Nazi Germany at, in, by 1936. 
the anti comturn Pact, which was often seen as directed as the Soviet Union, and then the Tripartite Pact of 1940, which required each of these countries to aid each other in war. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is significant because when Germany and the Soviet Union went to war, under the Tripartite Pact, Japan was required to aid Germany in the war, but that did not happen. Now what's also significant is Hitler, we would see his viewpoints on, on Russians and Slavs as inferior races. He never viewed the Japanese or Chinese as inferior, as he would write in his first testament. He viewed their their civil, they, he viewed them both as ancient civilizations that could be pe that people he could work with. And this was significant because a lot of times when you think of Hitler, you know, Hitler was seen as he, he wanted this the Aryan race where the blonde hair, blue eyes approach. I thought this was significant because what I learned about Hitler is. He, he wanted Nazi Germany above everyone else, which he does at the time. But he also was willing to work with others, particularly Japan and China. Eventually, he prefers working with Japan. Now, the Nazi-Soviet pact in September 1939, it did irk Japan because the Japanese had just gotten done fighting the Soviets. And um, to think that the Soviet Union was one of their enemies is working alongside Nazi Germany, one of their biggest allies, it really made Japan feel uneasy. Um, also, it, it very much allowed the Soviet Union to focus on Poland, and Soviet Union and Nazi Germany to focus on Poland, and it resulted in the beginnings of World War II. Now, there were motivations for the ceasefire. The, the Soviet motivations was to focus more on the Eastern Front, or on the European Front, sorry, on the European Front, rather than fighting Japan and Asia. Japan's motivations was Japan was fighting the Sino-Japanese War in China, the Second War, which was from 1937 to 1945. Relations with the United States was worsening. There had, been, there had been incidences with naval incidences. Japan was looking at going to the, the, um, with oil. There was issues with, the, with Japan wanting to, to entertain going to the colonies. And also it assured that the border would not be invaded. So Japan and the Soviet Union's motivations were both there. The pact, they had a lot of indirect focuses. Um, the pact allowed Japan to focus on fighting the United States in Asia. So it allowed Japan to build its forces. It allowed Japan to, um, to look at entertaining going south to the colonies. It focused on because Japan eventually knew it was going to have to fight the United States in Asia. And also the pact also allowed the Soviet Union to focus on Nazi Germany without worrying about Japan. Stalin viewed this pact so highly that he wished the Japanese foreign minister, Yoshi Masuka, to his train, which is something he never ever did with any foreign diplomats whether it was the United States, Great Britain, Nazi Germany. He never did that. So the fact that he did this for the Japanese foreign minister was very, very significant. Hitler was not happy about the pact. He was not happy that the Soviets and the Japanese did this behind his back. He was already planning the invasion of the Soviet Union. It was something that he was not very, he, the, the Soviet Union did this after Molotov had visited Berlin, 
But Stalin wanted assurances that Japan was not going to get involved in any potential conflict between he and Hitler. So the treaty was signed on April 13, 1941 in Moscow. Right after that, the visit to Berlin by Molotov, which was, who was a Soviet foreign minister, which did not go very well, and it kind of, because the Soviet Union was asking for, was asking for European land, and particularly in Eastern Europe, and um, Hitler was not, it was clear that Hitler was not going to give it to him. And um, so the meeting did not go very, very well. Um, but, so now the treaty's been taken care of, and when we return to history now, we're going to go over more of the pact on ON TV. So that's about 11 minutes. Good. <sighs> Good. Do you want to get right back into it? Or do you need I'll get back into it. Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Terramina. I want to continue talking about the, the Soviet-Japanese Pact in 1941 and how it impacted World War II. Um, I want to talk about Operation Barbarossa, which is the, the Nazi or the Axis power invasion of the Soviet Union, mostly Hitler's invasion. Hitler invaded the Soviet Union with support from... Italy and Romania and other countries would join. Hungary would join in. Um, Japan seriously considered considered getting rid of the pact. This was the first time that Japan considered breaking their pact with the Soviet Union. But they had just signed. They just signed it months ago. Now they considered breaking it. There was pro-German elements in the government who wanted them to invade, to invade from the east. There's obviously the alliance with Nazi Germany, the Tripartite Pact, which, which requires each of those countries to aid each other in war. How, there's also the long-standing history, as I mentioned, in the, as I mentioned between, that went back between the 1904-1905 Russo-Japanese War. There's also, there were also but it's also controversial. There was others who also wanted them to focus on going more south against the European colonies and did not want to break the pact with Russia or with the Soviet Union. There was a lot of, there was, the Soviet Union and Japan had just fought each other and did not want to risk another war with the Soviet Union. And there was also that possibility that the Soviet Union could be seen as a mediator for any type of peace settlement, particularly between Japan and the West. Now, Richard Sorge, the Soviet spy, he was a Soviet spy. He spied on both Germany and Japan. He kept Stalin and his cronies in the loop about Japan's intentions. When he found out that Japan was intending on going south, he informed Stalin and Molotov and Barry and the other cronies about, go about that Japan was going to go south. Now, Japan found out about this, and Sorge was arrested, tortured, and executed in Japan. Stalin did nothing to help him. And as a result, he as a result, he was executed. He was it was just it was tortured, executed, pretty much pretty much in Stalin's mind a waste. He didn't care about people too much at all. If you if he was done with you, he was done with you. That was his approach. And that was the case with Richard Sorge. So he was awarded the posthumous hero of the Soviet Union in 1964. And as a result of, uh, of his actions in the war, 
the Soviet Union awarded him posthumously. And it's just, it's crazy that it took 20 years since his death for the Soviet Union to reward him for essentially prevent, essentially letting Stalin know that Japan was going to not invade from the east rather than go south. There was not a lot of connections and um, coordination between the Nazis and the Japanese. The Japanese even said they were strongly against Hitler's anti-Semitic policies. So this was, this, so there was not really a lot of coordination between the Nazis and the Japanese. There, it really felt like it was two separate wars that were going on, one against Nazi Germany and the Axis allies, and the other ones against Japan. So Japan kept to the pact and focused south. They allowed the, Soviet, allowed the Soviet Union to send men from Siberia who was watching in case of a Japanese invasion to help aid in the Battle of Moscow. This action, along with the Russian winter, helped beat back the Nazis. And then the Soviets would not allow the Americans and British planes and ships to use their territory to strike in Japan. There was an unusual loyalty and respect between both Japan and the Soviet Union at a time when both sides were on different sides in World War II. There was always still thoughts of invasion, especially <coughs> from Japan's point of view. In 1942 and 1943, Japan still considered an invasion, especially if the Axis won the Battle of Stalingrad. General Yamashita, people remember from Pearl Harbor, in 1942 went to Mongolia to consider to, went to near the border between Manchuria and Mongolia to consider such an invasion and could that invasion occur. The Soviet, the Soviet Union did not fully trust Japan because Japan had different intentions. But to Japan's credit, they stuck with their word and did not risk a war with the Soviet Union. So, but also, also the Soviet Union won the Battle of Stalingrad and eventually drove Hitler along with the Axis allies out of, out of the Soviet Union altogether. Now in 1945, the Soviets considered denouncing the pact. It was clear at this point that Nazi Germany was going to be defeated. Japan, however, wanted the Soviets to be the peace mediators in a peace settlement between them and the Western Allies. Stalin, for his part, refused to be part of that. And they considered denouncing the pact and ultimately joining in the war against Japan, which they did three months after the war in Europe ended. There was a three-month waiting period. Stalin also had interests, especially in northern China, Korea, and also in Japan itself. On August the 9th, 1945, the Soviet Union joined in the war and invaded Manchuria, overwhelming the Japanese army. This happened right after the bombing of Hiroshima and right before the bombing of Nagasaki, the atomic bombs. The Soviets were able to gain North Korea while returning Manchuria back to both China and also into Mongolia. August 15th, Japan unofficially surrendered, even though the Soviets fought for another week. And then September 2nd, 1945, 
World War II was officially over. Now, the Soviet Union crossed into several islands during that last week of the war and even after the war. There were still some island disputes between both countries. The USSR occupied the Sakhalin Islands off the coast of Japan, and that was something that Japan never recognized and did not recognize. So there was a, another border incursions between the Soviet Union and Japan. Now, it's significant because the United States would occupy Japan, and Japan was very much an American ally in the Cold War. The island issues were resolved in 1956, October 19th, in Moscow. These known as the Soviet-Japanese Joint Declaration in 1956. There had still been some tensions between Japan and Russia, especially in terms of border disputes, but they were they had been able to they've been able to be cordial and in relations even to the present day. The legacy of the pact ended up the legacy of this pact was in many ways, this was, this was an indirect role in World War II. There was a, I, so in many ways, there was a lot of indirects that occurred. The Soviet Union allowed Japan to build up its military forces against the U.S. and its allies. So in many ways, could the pact have prevented Pearl Harbor? I don't know. But the, the pact allowed Japan to build up its military forces to not have to worry about the Soviet Union and focus on the eventual war with the United States and Great Britain. Japan, by not invading and adhering to the pact, allowed the Soviet Union to focus on defeating Germany. And in many ways, Japan indirectly helped decide Nazi Germany's fate. Even though they were allies, Japan's actions allowed the Soviet Union to focus on defeating Nazi Germany and in many ways helped decide World War II. It's crazy how it's crazy how it, it's crazy how this pact played a role in played a role in in both the European theater and the Pacific theater and it, it you know it's just it puts in the it just puts in perspective how complicated World War II really really was all right then that'll do it for this episode of history now have a great day see you soon take care